welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. I'm at the shop today and Coco's here with me as well. She's uh, making all the customers buy lots of things. So the reason we're doing this video today, well, two reasons. You've requested it. And also, Coco here is the reason why I actually started making the bags in the first place, isn't it? So today I'm going to show you how we make these little puppy poo bags so that when we take our pooch for a walk, we're not left stranded without any bag. That's mine. That's mine. You go make your own. Hey? So stick around and I will show you how to make these puppy poo bags or doggy doggy do pouches. Um, and at the end, I'm going to tell you, I'm actually going to make 20 of these at, all at once. And I'm going to show you or explain to you how long it takes me to do them. I'll fast forward through all the bits that you don't need to see, but I'll show you how they're made and then how I go about pricing them as well. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Would you like this? Yeah. Do you want to play with it? Maybe you can play with this one. Just stick around and I'll show you how we get these done. <laughs> Okay, so I've got 20 of these cut out for this batch of poo bags and I'm just going to do a batch of reds. Now, what I need to do is find my centre point. So I'll fold this in half and in half again. And I can just make a little nick in there. So you can see that little hole there is the centre of my bag. I'm going to use this one as my template to make the holes in all of my other bags. Now, uh, for those that don't have eyelets, you can actually use um, a buttonhole. So, and you don't have to sew the button on, but you can actually make a little buttonhole, slice it open, and then your bags can feed through there. So what we do here, I'm going to grab a few of these at a time, make sure they're lined up about evenly. So these are upholstery fabric, so they're quite a thick, sturdy fabric. And I'm just going to put the one with the hole on top. And I have a punch uh, tool here. I'm using a 12mm eyelet. So this punch will go through, make the hole big enough for a 12mm eyelet. I do occasionally use smaller ones when I run out of the eyelets too. So I'm going to use this punch and I've got just a brass plate but you can actually use just a piece of wood as well. I'm doing that because I'm on my shop counter um, and I don't want to do any cause any damage to my counter. So take your punch and just centre that over the top of your fabric like this and here's the fun part. Just hammer it. And you can hammer that a few times and you can see that the um, layers are starting to go through. And you can do this in less pieces or you can just keep on going through, punching through like I do. Until you get to the end. And just on the ends, if you need to, you can just actually cut that out. Likewise, if you don't have a hole punch but you have the eyelets, you can actually just cut a hole in the, um, in the fabric. That's just as easy to do. But because I'm making hundreds of these at a time, or 20 in this case, um, it's actually much more practical or um, time effective for me to be able to punch the holes straight away and then put my eyelets in. So I'm going to do that for the rest of my fabric and I keep one aside and use that as my template for the next lot. And if one of them is a little bit bigger, I don't really stress too much about it. Now that I've got the holes cut out in all of these uh, bag pieces, I'm ready to go and put my eyelets in. Put the eyelets in. I want to make sure that I actually have the the hat part of the eyelet on the outside of my bag so that it looks like that and then the flat washer part of my eyelet, eyelet goes on this side. 
So to do that, you take your little hat type or the mail, place it into your uh, press. I can't remember what this thing is called, but I bought this off eBay years ago. Your fabric goes wrong side uh, right side down. So if you were, had a patterned fabric, the pattern would be facing down and the washer goes on top like that and press down. And there we go. So that's one washer done for the little plastic bags that we're going to push through there. And I'll go and do that for the rest of the bags. So you can see this is having a production line like this is actually going to make my time much more cost effective. And it'll give me a much better hourly rate than I normally would if I were only doing, say, one or two or, or even five at a time. All right, so that does it. That is 20 river uh, eyelets put into the bags, and that's probably only taken me about five minutes to do. Now, I like to use a continuous zipper tape, so I buy hundreds of metres of this. I think I buy a 200 metre roll of this, and then I buy about a couple of hundred or 300 sliders to go with it. Um, so I like to just cut these to size. Now, my fabric was five and a quarter inches, so I'm going to cut my zips at five and a quarter inches. And just cut straight across the tape. And I've got 20 of these to do. If they're long, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you'd want them longer rather than shorter, but we can trim them back later on anyway. Because I'm using upholstery fabric, uh, this one here doesn't fray, so I don't actually need to serge or overlock the edges. So I'm really lucky with this one. If you're using regular fabric that frays, or if you've got furnishing fabric that does fray, any kind of fabric that frays really, go and overlock or serge all the edges, and then we can go on with the next step. So I don't have to do that with these particular fabrics. So what we're going to do now is take our zip, and we've got the raised teeth facing up. We want that upside down. So we're just going to turn that tape down. And all we're going to do is just run that along the top edge there. And I don't bother clipping these in place normally because I just have a big production line going and they're small enough pieces um, that I can manipulate it at the machine. But what we'll do here is just secure the zip onto the fabric like that and then we're going to take our zipper foot and stitch all the way down. Okay so I have my zipper foot on my machine now I just use the same zipper foot for uh, each each side of my um, bags and also for this top stitching it's all about trying to save some time with everything that you're doing. So I have my bag, my zips all ready to go and it's just a matter of making sure that the zipper tape is facing down and start sewing. Now for each of these, I'm, I'm just going to chain stitch all the bags together because that'll save on thread and time. And I'm going to back stitch at the beginning of and end of each bag before I continue on. Don't cut the thread, just take the next bag, the next zipper tape, lay that down over the top, making sure that you've got enough to cover both sides of the bag and continue. Back stitch. And just remember to do it on the short side, not the long side. And just continue all the way down until you've done every single bag. Okay. 
Now that I've done the zip on one side of 20 of these bags, I'm going to go to the other side, start, turn the whole lot around. I don't need to cut it all off. And I'm just going to continue sewing this other part of the zip down on the other side. So it's just a matter of taking this and pulling it off and shifting it across to the other side. So just pull it straight off and shift it straight to the other side. When you get to the next one, take that off and do exactly the same thing. And then you can continue on with the rest of your bags. Now the zipper tapes have been inserted on all 20 of the bags and what we need to do now is top stitch the zips down. So I'm going to change my thread, I'll keep the black underneath and I'll change to a red thread just on the top here. Alright, it's time to top stitch. So don't cut these apart, it's much easier to work if you keep everything together. Turn the underside of your fabric so that it faces the main body. So you can see the zipper tape facing the main body of the bag there. And just finger press that down and then we'll just go and top stitch down the side. Back stitch when you get to the end and with the next one just flip the zip over so that the tape sits underneath your main body and continue on back stitching at the beginning and end of each bag. Once you finish doing all the bags on one side then bring it around again and we can start again with the other side. Okay so I've done all my zippers. What I need to do now is just cut all these off and if you are doing this to sell pop some labels on. So I'll just trim all, uh, separate all the bags. So I have my labels and I'm going to pop them on my bag now. Now you want to make sure that your labels are put on before you go any further. So often I'll actually put my labels on before I do my zips. So I actually forgot to do that. So pop your labels on. I like to put them just in the center there on one side of the bag and I'll go and stitch these on now. All right, the labels are all done. So you can see how um, it actually makes a huge difference to the finished product when you actually just have just a really simple little label. You don't need to spend too much money on them, just something simple and something that gets your message across. The next thing we need to do is add some little swivel clips to the ends of our bags. Now if you don't have access to swivel clips you can just attach velcro to the end here and make a little velcro loop so that the, the, your customers can actually put that over their, the chain in their dog's, the dog's lead. What we're doing here, because I do actually have swivel clips, is you can use ribbon, you can use cotton tape, um, whatever you like really. Um, I've just got some bias binding here which I've cut into two, center, two inch strips and I'm just going to feed that through the clip
just like that and lay that over the top of my bag. So I've got the little eyelet just in the center there and we're just going to lay the swivel clip over the top of the bag and then we're just going to secure that down. So that's secured down and I'm going to go and do that for the rest of the bags before I put the zipper pulls on. Okay, we have got our swivel clips attached to the bag now and we're on the home stretch. So what we need to do is get our zipper sliders and we'll insert those into the bags and then we can actually close up the bag and it'll be completely finished. Now to put the zipper slider on I've trimmed the the um, ends of the zips here and we just want to turn the bag around and the zip slider we're going to have the curved end facing us. Bring the bag together and you just want to pop the slider over the top here just until it, there's some resistance. Hold it in place at the back there. Grab the other end and just pop that in over the top. Back down onto the table. Put your fingers on either side and give it a push. And there we go. So I'll show you that again. With the curved end of the zipper slider facing up and facing towards you, pop it over the top of the zipper tape just until there's some resistance. Finger over the back. Push that in until you get that resistance. And push down until you've got your zip on. So now we're ready to turn all of these bags through to the wrong side. Pop your swivel inside and we will close the bags up. So to close the bags up, find the centre point. So just push the zip together here. You've got the centre point just there. You can make a little nick just so that you can see where it is and place the center of the zip over that little cut out there and this is where we're going to sew straight down. On this side we know where the center is because we've got the ribbon and the swivel. Leave your zipper open because we want to be able to turn this through later and Place the zipper over the centre and now we're just going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch down on both sides. Now I, because I'm using upholstery fabric I actually like to double stitch or triple stitch my seams. Uh, there's no weight in here so it really doesn't matter but I do like the added stability of the extra seams on my, um, on my bags. So we'll stitch that one down now and we'll do the rest for all of the others. Okay, I've got all my bags turned inside out and I'm ready to just go through and stitch all of these down. As I said, I like to double stitch or triple stitch my edges. Seam allowance can be whatever you like. Mine's between a quarter of an inch and half an inch. Back stitch. When I come to the zip, I like to just secure the seam there again. Make sure the zipper tape is buttered next to each other. And stitch to the end and back stitch. And then you can do exactly the same for the other side. bag finished. So I will quickly go and stitch up all of the others. Now when I'm doing the next ones um, I showed you 
to make a little nick and then clip the edges. You really don't need to do that. If you place your zip over the top of the centre of your ribbon there, that's your centre point. Just make sure your swivel is out of the way. Line up your edges and then you can just stitch that down. And when it comes to doing the other side, this project is small enough that you'll be able to centre it really easily. Okay, these are completely finished and all I need to do now is put in a roll of um, the puppy poo bags. So just open up your bag, find the end of your roll and give that a little bit of a twist. Push it through the eyelet. And close up the bag and there we go so all you have to do now is just pull the bag out get to the perforation and just the next one will come out just like it is with a packet of tissues now that you've suffered through watching me make 20 of these poo bags um, I'll just explain to you how I work out my pricing so it took me just over 90 minutes to cut and sew and uh, label and put all the zips in for everything to do with these bags. So from start to finish, it's taken just over 90 minutes. Now, I've mentioned before that my flat rate for labour is $40 an hour. So I don't do anything under $40 an hour. Anything above that, is just a bonus for me so when I'm working out whether something's worth doing that's what my base rate now I've done 20 of these in around about 90 minutes so that works out about $200 an hour and as much as I'd love to have that per hour for my work it's not the way it works I still have my labels I have the eyelets I have the zips and the sliders the swivels and the ribbon or tape that we put on the end and the other thing too is it's much easier to sell a product when a customer knows what they're actually used for so I go across to the discount shop I buy up all their rolls of um, all their rolls of poo bags so they come in a packet of about four or five rolls only a couple of dollars and I'll just buy all of them and pop those into all of these bags so the customer can see exactly what they're used for. Now there's only a few dollars worth of product in each of these zips, probably not even that much. Uh, eyelets, I buy those by the hundreds. The uh, swivels, whether you use the narrow ones or the thick ones, I buy those by the hundred. The zipper tape, I buy about 200 metres at a time. And same with the sliders, two or 300 at a time. So I've always got them on hand. I don't waste my time or my money purchasing uh, zips to match. What stands out for me on all my products is the black zips and the labels. So wherever I can, I'll just go black. It goes with absolutely everything. It keeps the price down. It means I don't have to buy 10 meters of gold and six meters of blue and pink and things like that. I can just keep it really, really simple. I sell these bags for $15 each. And given that I haven't paid for the fabric, I, I make a really, really good profit on them. But I think that they're too good to be just five or ten dollars. You can buy um, these um, bag storage pouches for a few dollars at the supermarket, but these are handmade. These are nice little uh, 
a, a nice little selling point for somebody coming into town that wants to have a little souvenir of the town that they visited. Customers love coming in and seeing the handmade products that I have. Um, so $15 for me I think is a really fair price. It covers my time, covers my power, covers absolutely everything that might need to be covered. Uh, and also if I go and use regular quilting fabric that I have actually purchased, it'll actually cover the price of that as well. So for me $15 is a really fair price um, and they're super quick to make. As I said I've done 20 of them in an hour and a half. You can just sit there and just sew hundreds of them in a day and then they're all ready. I actually keep them and I actually forgot about this because I'm thinking I've got no reds left but I've actually got a box and I'm going to go and grab it. So I've got a box of uh, poo bags uh, just stashed behind the counter. These are the bags that I buy. I just buy there's what, six of those in there and it cost me $2 for the whole packet. Sometimes I have to pay $2.50 and there might only be five in there. You can buy them a lot more cheaply on Amazon and eBay. But for me, it's just as simple to go across the road and support my local business and get some of these to put in the bags. Uh, yeah, and I just make loads and loads of them and keep a stash behind the counter so that if I run out of colours or a customer wants to buy a few of them, then I have them available for them. Um, I have these on my website as well. So to keep the postage costs down, when I actually sell the bags, I will take the roll out and I'll just put three bags inside one of these and post it because then it can actually be posted flat. Customers aren't going to want to pay um, tracked postage uh, $10 for postage for something as little as this and then all of a sudden you're spending $25 or $30 on a product just because you've got a 20 cent roll of um, paper in here. Take the bags out, take the roll out, just put a few in there and post it flat for the customers and then that way it's only a couple of dollars postage for them. I hope I've given you all the information that you might need to make these bags and that you enjoy it and sell lots yourself. Let me know what you think. Catch you next time.